Hi there, my name is Cole Failing. If you haven't heard of me, just think of me as a suspiciously lucky high roller in an underground casino. Today, I'm going to be talking about how I made the homemade suit from Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. The homemade suit is one of my absolute favorite Spider-Man suits that we've seen in live action. On the surface, it seems like it's made of very simple components, but if you look closer, there are actually many complicated details to it. Now, I'm going to start off by talking about the most important part of the costume, the hoodie. The hoodie is really the centerpiece of the entire costume, so when you're looking around for one, there are a couple of important details that you want to keep an eye out for. Unfortunately, I'm 99.99% .99 sure that the hoodie used on the screen-worn Spider-Man Homecoming costume was custom-made. The hoodie that I used for my costume is a vintage hoodie from the 1990s that I've heavily modified to match all of the screen-worn details. Modifying this hoodie essentially entailed unstitching the entire thing, modifying every piece of the pattern in some way, and then sewing it all back together again. Which, let me tell you, is a rockin' way to spend your Saturday night. The most unique feature of the hoodie that Tom wears in the movie are these strange curved pockets. When I first got this hoodie, it had traditional over-the-zipper pockets. Obviously, I couldn't stand for that, so I greased a few palms, and long story short, my hoodie's got the accurate pockets now. Another interesting thing about this hoodie is that it is significantly shorter than most traditional hoodies. I had to remove about four inches of length off the bottom of this hoodie. Here you can see the absurd amount of fabric I had to get rid of. After removing it all, I realized the zipper was now four inches too long, so bonus, I had to replace the entire zipper as well. For the logo on the front of the hoodie, I have two recommendations. First, sketch it out in pencil before doing it in ink. And second of all, do not use a Sharpie. The ink will bleed into the fabric way more than you want and you'll be miserable. I recommend using a ballpoint pen instead. If you use a Sharpie to draw your suit's logo, I will know. A couple other details you want to keep an eye out for. You want to look for a hoodie that has a metal zipper and also some of these wider um, shoelace-like drawstrings. When I first got this hoodie, it didn't have the shoelace drawstrings, so I had to replace those. The screen-worn hoodie's drawstring also has brass aglets, which I still need to get for mine. Also, and this is the most important detail of all, you want to find one that's red. Next, I'm going to talk about the sweatpants. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cool. You forgot about the sleeves. I don't want to be stuck with this tank top Spider-Man hoodie. Now, there's an important reason that I skipped those, and I'll get to that in a moment. For the sweatpants, you want to keep an eye out for a pair that are a really, really light blue, almost baby blue color. There are shockingly few reference images of this suit online, so finding color references is a nightmare. I recommend simply watching and pausing the movie. The pair that I found have these drawstrings, which the originals do also have, I now know from seeing the suit on display in person. However, I don't think they're ever visible on screen, so you can probably get away without them. For the hoodie sleeves, it was really important to me that the material for the sleeves exactly matched the material and color of the sweatpants. So, when I found a pair of sweatpants I was satisfied with, I bought two pairs and used the material from the second pair to make the sleeves. Now, after you've cut off the original sleeves of your hoodie, you might be tempted to throw those away or use them as a painting canvas or feed them to your neighbor's dog. But don't be so hasty. The fabric from your original sleeves is exactly what we're going to use to make the mask for the suit. To make the mask, measure the circumference of your head and then divide that number by pi to find the diameter of your head. That is the diameter of this semicircle that you're going to cut out of the sleeve fabric. But it's very important to sew the sleeve fabric with the inside of the material facing outward. For the mask lenses, I removed the strap and bridge from an old pair of welding goggles. The original lenses have these little greeblies on top, which I 3D printed and attached to mine, but you can kind of get away with just sticking some random crap onto the side of your goggles. It'll look the part. For the actual lenses of the goggles, I used a thin, loosely woven white fabric that I could see through at a close range. I don't know what the originals were made of, but it probably wasn't this. The screen-accurate fingerless gloves worn in Homecoming are from the cycling brand Gyro. These are the screen-accurate models, which are called the Bravo gloves. These gloves were identified by the gel pattern on their palms, which perfectly matches the ones that Tom wore. The screen-accurate shoes are red Sakwa water shoes with the Sakwa logo removed from the side. Finally, the last thing you're going to need for the costume are a pair of red ankle-high socks. I have no idea where the screen-used pair came from, so I don't have a brand recommendation for these. Just follow your heart. 
One final important piece of the costume is, of course, the web shooters. Now, I have an entire separate video about how I built these web shooters, and I highly recommend going and checking it out if you're interested. Well, there you have it. Thanks for checking out my homemade Spider-Man suit build. I had a lot of fun making this Spider-Man suit, and I can guarantee that it won't be my last Spider-Man project. Keep your eyes peeled. If you have any questions for me about the suit, just communicate with me telepathically, and stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to be tracking down and drinking from the Fountain of Youth. Spoilers. It tastes like pennies. See you next time. Good old Spider-Man.